because I picked Cle- Cleveland and it worked out, I realized why it worked out. And why it worked out is because there's a lot of people all across the United States that will invest in Cleveland because it's so cheap to buy a house there. Mm-hmm. So you can buy a property for 50000 a 100000 and the rent would still be nine fifty or 1100 So it's called a cash flow market. Mm-hmm. Here, you probably could buy a house for 400000 and the rent might be 2500 maybe 3000 so it's not you're you're not cash flowing as much for your money hey hey and welcome to another episode of full transparency with donnie where i give you a fly on the wall perspective of all things entrepreneurship and the entrepreneurs who are doing the entrepreneuring we're still working on our intro but we're going to take that for now um i love this platform so much because i a lot i'm able to give you guys an inside perspective on entrepreneurship sometimes if you're new here it's just you and i we're having conversations and i'm giving you game and then sometimes you get to see me have these conversations with some of my successful friends and people that i am just meeting uh, for the first time and today we are doing exactly that I am so excited to have a young lady um, that I've seen at events and in passing, uh, comes highly recommended. Uh, Tati Tedemet is here with us, and she is a virtual wholesaler, which I have a whole lot of questions about. Welcome, Tati. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Are you a little nervous? I'm excited. I think the nervousness is coming from the excitement. (laughs) Yeah, 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 because we're going to have a good time. Yes. So the cool thing about full transparency is that we're just having a conversation. Like, pretend like these cameras aren't even here. And you and I are just going to, you're going to tell me everything I need to know about your journey in virtual wholesaling. I hope. I hope. Because when I saw this, um, first of all, virtual wholesaling, in my mind, when I think real estate, I think that I have to, one, get an agent, find some properties, get listings, go and look at these properties, walk through them, assess the damage and all that stuff before I make a purchase decision. But you're doing this virtually? Yes, exactly. So I'm doing it from home, but where it came from was out of necessity. Um, I wanted to do the real estate thing. Like I wanted to either be a real estate agent or wholesale in Las Vegas where I live but um it kind of happened and I figured it out along the way I'll say that I'm a I'm a single mom Mm -hmm. so I stay at home with my kids Mm -hmm. and I was waitressing and when the pandemic happened I got laid off my waitressing job and I had to figure out something to do and it had to be from home Mm -hmm. and that's kind of how I stumbled into this business so it's pretty crazy but it's definitely the opposite of what you think when you think traditional real estate so I'm having a hard time just imagining one day you're waitressing, you're serving food and drinks, and then the next day you are putting contracts down on property. <laughs> like, what was, the, what was the actual transition? Did you see an ad or did you know somebody? Like, how were you introduced to the industry? So I was waitressing on the strip. And, um, well, I'll, I'll back that up by saying when I was 19, I did get my real estate license, but I totally failed. Okay. I, I sucked. I didn't even put the effort in that it required, and I failed, and I just started working in the workforce. Um, so while I was waitressing, this guy from Texas came and sat down at my table, and he left a business card that said real estate problem solver. Mm. And I followed him on Instagram, and I started watching him. He was flipping houses, and I'm like, this is so cool. He's making so much money. And I always wanted to do something, but I never succeeded in entrepreneurship yet at that point. Um, when the pandemic happened, I DM'd him and I was like, how did you start doing this? How did you start flipping houses? And he was like, well, you know, this is what I do. I started off wholesaling, but if you have like 20 or 40 K you can lend on one of my flips and you can make 12% in a year. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Ugh, that sounds really slow. Like I need to make income right now. I'm not really looking to invest money. What can I do to start making money right now? And he mm-hmm. told me, well, he started wholesaling his first three years. He was wholesaling. So I did exactly that. I did everything wholesaling that I could find on YouTube in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And I called people for like eight hours a day for two weeks. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. You said I did exactly that. Yeah. I did everything wholesaling that I could find on YouTube. What does that mean? So if you go on YouTube, there is a wormhole about wholesaling. Um, Putting up bandit signs is one thing. Mm -hmm. Another thing is like cold calling people, which is what I started doing. Mm -hmm. Getting um, one of those call center dialer systems, Mm -hmm. putting it on your computer and getting a thousand or 2000 people's names and phone numbers and just calling them. 
mm-hmm. cold calling them. So I did that. I did that for six to eight hours a day. What are you saying? So you're whole, you're calling people. So you have this dialer. Yep. And it's auto dialing is what it's doing yep. until it gets somebody who like opts in and wants to take your call. Yeah. Who answers the phone? Okay. Anybody who answers the phone. Yes. What do you say? I'm just like, hey, hey, Donnie. And then they'll be like, uh, yeah, who's this? And I'm like, hi, I was, you know, wondering if you want to sell your house on 123 Main Street. And nine times out of 10, they're like, no. But that one person will be like, actually, yeah, I do want to sell. Mm-hmm. So it's really like you're throwing spaghetti at a wall, hoping something sticks mm. when you're cold calling. You're just looking for that needle in the haystack. So you might call 5,000 people and get four or five people who actually want to sell. Got you. Okay. So you are now going through the process. You're making some calls. This is where you started. How long did it take before you got your first like, yeah, actually, I do want to sell? So the two weeks I spent in Vegas, everybody just cussed me out and told me I was crazy. <laughs> Sounds like Vegas. <laughs> and mm-hmm. why would I why would I sell my house to one of you guys? It was it was the worst. So I started to lose motivation and then I saw somebody on YouTube talking about virtual wholesaling. And they were like, you can do it in any city from anywhere. And I'm like, I'm going to give this thing one more try because Vegas is not it. This is not working. So uh, randomly, I picked Cleveland, Ohio, because I was in these wholesaling Facebook groups and I kept seeing $20,000 houses out there. And I'm like, this is crazy. A house mm-hmm. in Vegas is at least like three hundred, four hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, if I can't sell a $20,000 house, this I'm, I, I'm not supposed to do this. So I did the same thing. I got a list in Cleveland and on day three... So this is technically my third week, but it's only my third day in Cleveland. Okay. Um, on day three in Cleveland, somebody said, yes, I want to sell. I was like, oh, my God, this is real. I, yeah. might, I might get a deal. And that guy ended up being my first deal. Wow. Okay, walk me through that. So you get somebody and you're going through these calls. At this point, you're like, I'm about to get another no. Yes. You're probably feeling like this is a waste of time, but there's something that keeps me here. You get him on the phone and he's like, yep, I do want to sell. What happens next? So from there, I'm like, why do you want to sell? And it turned out that his father-in-law had passed away. And the only reason they even had that rental property was, excuse me, the only reason they even had that rental property was to own something close to him. And now that he was gone and he had just passed away like two months before, now that he was gone, they wanted to get rid of it. The tenants hadn't been paying rent for over a year. Mm -hmm. um, And there was leaks now and issues that he was going to have to then repair. Mm -hmm. So he was like, I want to get rid of this property. Um, It was a bad deal when I bought it. I should have never bought it. And we really connected on his father-in-law had just passed away. My stepmother had just passed away. COVID was happening. You know, we were both going through so much. We actually both cried on that call. So it was very emotional. And when I gave him the the offer, because it has to be a low offer when you're wholesaling, because the point is to then sell it to a a buyer, an investor that's going to rent it out. Mm -hmm. So since it has to be lower than normal, there has to be a reason why that person really, really wants to sell. And he really wanted to get rid of it. But when I offered him $15,000, I really thought he was going to say no. And all he said was, is that the best you can do? And then I said, yes. And then he said, okay, send the contract. <laughs> really? And in that moment, what's your thought? Like, oh, no way. No way. I need to find a contract. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I need to find a contract. You felt so little surety in this that you didn't even have a contract. I didn't even have I didn't even have a contract. I didn't have anything until I got to that step where I where I needed where it. You needed it. Yeah. I didn't have a I didn't know what a title company really was. I just knew I would need one at some point. But until I had a contract, I wasn't even looking for a title company. I literally was going step by step by step. Mm-hmm. And that's the moment it became real. Like, okay, I need to find a contract and then a title company. And I'm not even believing he's going to sign it. So I get the contract and I call him back and I'm like, I sent it to you. Can you open it right now? Right can now. You, can you read it? I'm right here. Let me know if you have any questions. He, was, he wanted to get rid of it. He was like, I signed it. Mm. And so now you have this deal. You've done the contract. How long did it take to close? So it took about three weeks to close from there because I was in Vegas and it's in Cleveland. I had to find somebody to walk the property and take pictures so I could show buyers the property. So I got on Craigslist and I went in Craigslist labor gigs and I posted something and I was like, can somebody please take a picture of of a house for me? I'm an investor and I live in Las Vegas. And like 80 people responded to my email. I got on the phone with some of them. Somebody went, he walked the property. It's crazy because we're friends to this day. We just did a deal last week. Mm -hmm. And um, he went, took pictures. And then I went on Facebook 
and I found some Facebook investor groups and I was like, you know, would anybody be interested in this area? And a bunch of people responded. I called them. I sent them the pictures and he went, um, the one that took the pictures, he went with the, with the potential buyers and they looked at the units and within two days, somebody wanted it and they wanted it for 27,500. And at that time I was, I wasn't negotiating anything. I was like, okay, take it, take it. Yeah. And it, and it was my first deal. Mm -hmm. It was almost $15,000. That is so good. Okay, so that's your first th- first deal. That's the epitome through that process of believing in your ability to figure it out. Like, that's one of my favorite affirmations ever. I believe in my ability to figure it out. It applies to everything. And then here you are going into this new industry. You've been watching YouTube University trying to figure everything out. You finally get somebody. You get somebody and you have to figure it out step by step. Like, wait, okay, he said yes. Let me find a contract. Wait, let me find a title company. Wait, let me find this person. Wait, let me even understand what the contract says. Oh, wait, somebody has to be there to show that person pictures. And the deal hasn't closed yet, so you don't have the money (laughs) to fly to Cleveland, Ohio to do this. So all these things happen for you. And is it in that moment that you say, okay, now I'm believing in this virtual wholesaling business stuff? I a fire was lit in me that I never felt before. I was so excited. I didn't even care about sleeping or eating. I just wanted to to do more to prove to myself that this wasn't just a fluke mm-hmm. and I didn't just get lucky. Mm-hmm. So I would spend all of the hours that I was able to call sellers just calling sellers. And then the figuring it out, I would do it after like 4 p.m. Eastern time. Mm-hmm. And it, it it worked. I ended up getting five more deals that month. And in my first month, I did six deals, which was like, very very unlikely for anyone just starting out in real estate which i learned later but for me it was just go 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 yeah and and it really worked out did you focus in your first month did you stay focused in cleveland yeah i stayed focused in cleveland for about nine months before i ever picked a a second market Mm -hmm. how do you pick your markets so because i picked cleveland and it worked out i realized why it worked out and why it worked out is because there's a lot of people all across the united states that will invest in cleveland because it's so cheap to buy a house there Mm -hmm. so you can buy a property for fifty thousand a hundred thousand and the rent would still be 950 or 1100 so it's called a cash flow market Mm -hmm. here you probably could buy a house for four hundred thousand and the rent might be twenty five hundred maybe 3000. So it's not, you're, you're not cash flowing as much for your money. So people in Atlanta, in Las Vegas, in New York, in California, all buy properties in Cleveland. And there's other markets like that all around the country. Mm -hmm. So when I realized that I started studying other cities that are similar to Cleveland that have really cheap properties, but good rental prices. Mm -hmm. And then I, I added St. Louis as my second market. Okay. So you're in St. Louis now, second market. Are you still doing this virtually and as an independent uh, are you are you considered an investor or wholesaler? Um, I'm at the time just a wholesaler. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm gonna get it. Grab a, a napkin real quick. No problem. So, <laughs> at the time you are going through your process, you've now how old is your daughter during this time? So my daughter wasn't even born yet. So okay. at that time, sorry. so um, my daughter wasn't even born yet. I actually got pregnant with her about three months later. So at the time I only had my son Mm -hmm. and he was um, three going on four. Okay. So this is like a single mom's dream career. (laughs) You're literally just on the computer. Where do you even go? Are you like on Zillow, realtor.com? Like how are you finding these properties? So the first thing is um, the data and the list that came from a website called reprolist.com. Mm-hmm. And from there, it's like you get a seven day free trial or whatever, but it's a ba- basically a hundred dollars a month and you get 10,000 seller names, addresses mm-hmm. from there. You skip trace that to get their phone numbers. Mm-hmm. And that might cost about 300 bucks to skip trace to 10,000. And now, so for $400, you have 10,000 people you can talk to. Mm. Then the auto dialer is about 150. Okay. So now you're all in at 550 and you can call people for 10,000 people. You can do that all day. And on the dialer, if you're doing what I was doing, like six to eight hours a day, you can get through uh, 800 to 1,000 people a day. So you can really get get through that list. 
What kind of money are you making as a wholesaler? So uh, at minimum $10,000 a month, mm -hmm. but on average more like $30,000, $50,000 a month. Now that I have a team, it's pretty much consistently at, at least thirty. Um, but I always, when I, when I tell people, it's like, you can expect to make between 10 and 50 and then you will have those crazy months where you make over a hundred K. Yeah. Okay. So walk me through it. Obviously this is a numbers game. Yes. The more people you call, the more leads you have, the more people you call, the more people you call, the more, uh, deals you get, you right? Got it. Done. So the reason for you to now need a team is, is it so that you can have more people on the phone making calls or. What are what is this team doing that's made you more profitable? So after a while, I did it for a year and a half by myself, but doing sales calls all day, you can get really, really burnt out. And I really burnt myself out because I was doing like six, seven, eight hours a day every day and I was doing everything. Mm -hmm. And I got to a point where I wasn't happy anymore because I was making really good money consistently, but I was so tired and emotional roller coaster every day. I had to do everything. So I realized if this is going to be a long-term business where I can also start buying properties and, you know, doing other things that I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Like I was creating content throughout all this time and I found myself loving the time I spent doing that and hating the time I spent calling sellers. So I realized, okay, I need to um, go ahead and find some people to help me out. And that's when I hired some, we call them acquisitions people, but they're basically salespeople to call the sellers for me. Okay, so you've got people now, and that, is that the bulk of your team that you have people who are making these calls? People who are making the calls, and then now, um, this year I hired someone to also help me talk to buyers and, and get the deal sold as well. Talk to buyers and get the deal sold. So the buyers being the investors. Yeah, the investors. Who will want this. So they're going out and they're finding it, and you're really just identifying the property and saying, hey, sales team, get, get on the call with these sellers, and then someone else get on the call with these buyers, make these deals, and then it comes across your table for closing? Yeah, so right now at this point, um, there's pretty much people in place for everything. What I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis is just looking at what deals we have, what needs to happen in order for them to close, and kind of motivating and training people that are in those roles. So from the cold callers who touch the seller first to the acquisitions people who close the deal to the dispositions girl who actually sells the deal. Um, there's people actually now to do all of that. So I'm like the leader and the motivator and the trainer. And um, when I need to jump in, if they're sick or whatever, I'm, I'm jumping in whatever seat I need to be in. Mm. Do you ever come across deals and as a wholesaler that you just want to keep for yourself? Yeah. And I have. So in 2021, I bought a bunch of properties and then I became a landlord slash rehabber and my wholesaling business almost slowed down to a full stop because it was a totally different business. And I realized I like wholesaling a lot better. So I do own some properties, but I'm not aggressively buying at all. I, mm. I'm unless it's like too good to be true. I'm not going to keep it. Mm -hmm. Do you own your own home that you live in? I don't. Not right now. No, no. I, re I rent an apartment. <laughs> okay. I also rent. I do own property, but I also rent and it's confusing for people, right? Okay. So you're making this money in real estate. You have access to all of this underpriced under the market property. Um, why renting for you versus home ownership? So number one, I never wanted to raise my kids in Vegas. So when I started making money wholesaling, I moved around a lot. First, I moved to Cleveland because I was like, I'm going to be a flipper and do rentals here because I'm getting so many deals here. Just with that exact mindset, I'm like, I'm finding all these cheap deals. Mm -hmm. So I rented a house in Cleveland and I lived there for a year and I really honestly couldn't take the cold and the lack of sun. I got super depressed and my baby was so little. I was also having postpartum and all that stuff. So from there, I moved to Miami and I... It was so many emotional Ooh, decisions. That's different. <laughs> so many emotional decisions. I was like, you know what? I don't like Cleveland. I'm going to move to somewhere sunny. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just sad being away from my family. So that's what brought me back to Vegas. But I don't want to live in Vegas long term. So I don't want to buy a house to live in. Mm -hmm. um, we have my family has two properties in Vegas. And I'm okay with buying rentals there, but it's still not even the best market where you get the most money for your rentals. But here's really great, like not the city, but around Atlanta is really great for rentals and stuff. So the deals that I would keep and maybe live in would be um, creative financing, which is like a whole other conversation. But basically, like you take over people's mortgage or the sellers finance the property. Things like that are pretty much what I'm keeping more. And mm -hmm. if I found like the perfect house in a great school zone like that, I probably would keep it. But I just don't want to be 
tied in and feel like I have to live somewhere for three, four years. I like the flexibility of renting right now. Okay, that's fair. Very in alignment with why um, I rent for myself as well. Okay, so we're wholesaling property. Do you believe that it's the simplest strategy to make money in real estate? It's a, it's the simplest strategy and the least risky, for sure. Mm -hmm. Everything else is risky. Yeah. I have a girlfriend who does wholesaling. Her and her husband um, have been wholesalers for, I don't know, maybe the last 10 years. Wow. And they are seven-figure earners. They don't teach it. They don't have any pro. They literally just make money from wholesaling. And I can remember it's probably been about 10 years at this point where I'm asking her. We went to high school together. And I'm like, girl, put me on. Like, I want to do this too, right? I used to be uh, in real estate heavy I, on the sales side, a licensed realtor. And I never dabbled in the wholesaling side because it just seemed like I, I wanted people to just come to me, yeah. right, with their property. And so when she and I sat down for a conversation, at that time she had like these booklets of phone numbers and leads. You can buy them and they're mailed to you much like you can get them now on the Internet. And so you're buying, <laughs> I guess, zip codes and neighborhoods yep. and all this information. And she's like, OK, so you're going to go through here and you're going to make these calls. And when I saw that booklet of information, I'm like, there's no freaking way. I am about to sit here and hand out like I don't even think the auto dialer was a thing or was popular. Maybe it was at that time, but she didn't know about it at that time. And it just seemed so like so much work. Here's the thing, though. It probably is so much work, but it is also so rewarding. And there are people who are saying, I'm not doing all that work just to make ten thousand dollars. Like, let's go through the process. What does it really look like to be successful in wholesaling? So you're 100 percent right. It is a lot of work, especially when you're kind of failing forward and learning things as you go. Like I was eventually it's not as much hard work because you can have a team and the hard work then becomes motivating them and keeping them as excited as you were when you were the one getting the deals. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, um, it looks like you either have money or you have time, you know, kind of like any business, right? You can, if you have money, you can use that money to make the time so much shorter. So let's say you have a bunch of money and you want to invest in softwares and systems to send out a bunch of text messages or mail or uh, buy leads online. Those are all things you can do. You can have people coming to you as well, investing in online stuff, just like any, any restaurant or bakery or whatever would invest in SEO and pay-per-click marketing. Mm -hmm. You can do that for home buying as well. So if you have the money, it can be a lot easier. If you don't have the money, you have to leverage your time. And that's where you are calling a lot of people or you're hiring a bunch of people to call a lot of people. So from the first call, then the negotiation, then the contract, then is finding a buyer and selling it to a buyer. So it's not hard there's just a lot of things that can go wrong in the process. Um, mm. Let's talk about that. What are some things that can go wrong in the wholesaling process? So it's, I know you're super familiar with all this since you were an agent and I didn't know that. That's so cool. Um, but liens, yeah. back taxes, yeah. other people that are owners of the property or the land that don't want to sell. So now you have this deal and you're like, yes, I'm going to make all this money. And then, oh, wait, there's an ex-wife. Or a sister that also yeah. was inherited. So um, all of those things are good problems because they always end in a big check. I worked 60 hours a week to make like $48,000 a year. Mm -hmm. To be able to make that in a month or two, mm -hmm. in the amount of time that I don't even spend eight hours a day. I didn't spend the time that I spent waitressing when I started, if I spent six to eight hours a day doing it, that still was less with the commute and everything that I was doing waitressing and at least four or five times the money. So it is hard work, but when you compare it to the other jobs that are out there, the other things that are out there, even in entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship is hard. Mm -hmm. You don't start a clothing brand and it just blows up the first year. You have to grow it. Mm -hmm. With wholesaling, you can make $100,000 in the first few months. That opportunity is there to make a lot of money fast. So I, I it's not easy, but right. it, it can be fast. So I think it's 100% worth the effort. 
Mm. Yeah, many things that are rewarding um, come with, they, they require a lot of effort yes. from you. And that's just the shift like that people have to have, that mindset that says, if I want a big reward, then I have to actually put in big effort. Now, I know that you are super successful um, in what it is that you do. And I also know that you now have a mentorship program, I believe, that teaches people uh, the real ins, ins and outs, the details, like you're walking them through the process. But before you even consider the mentorship community, are you making multiple six figures or more simply from wholesaling properties? Just from wholesaling. Just from wholesaling. Just from wholesaling. My first year, I made over three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and that I never, I never seen that kind of money in my life. Yeah, most people, <laughs> many of us have not. <laughs> many of us have not. And to especially coming from where I come from, like making eight hundred dollars in a week waitressing was like a crazy amazing week. Yeah. So to to be able to make thousands of dollars in one check, it was definitely motivating mm -hmm. and. I worked really hard for that, though. Mm -hmm. I worked really hard year one, year two, and now I'm in year three. Mm -hmm. I've made multiple six figures every year. Mm -hmm. But I actually started helping people learn after I did maybe like 15 deals. I had broken six figures, but I wasn't into the multiple yet. When I got my first deal, I made a YouTube video. I was like, I'm just going to put this out there. And in the YouTube video, I was like, I'm not telling anybody what to do or teaching you how to do it. I'm just documenting my process because um, I always saw people say, I wish I would have documented my process when I started entrepreneurship. So I was like, I'm going to document my journey and my process. And in doing that on IG and on YouTube, people kept asking me for help. Mm -hmm. So I started doing these free Zoom classes. I was like, whatever, I'm just going to tell people what I what I learned. And I did like 15 deals at that point. And I started doing these free Zoom classes. And then it got so overwhelming. So I was like, all right, I'm going to charge $50 for these Zoom classes. Mm -hmm. And that's where the mentorship really came from. It came from just people kept asking me, how did you do it? Can you help me? A lot of single moms, too. A lot of people that were laid off during the pandemic and were stuck at home and wanted to make money, too. Um what we thought was going to be a couple of months of being home ended up being two years mm, yeah, of being for sure. home. For sure. So when the jobs came back, me and a bunch of people that started with me, we didn't go back to our jobs. Yeah. And now you do this. This has literally changed the dynamic of your family, I am assuming, and also increased the responsibility that you might have uh, to family, to people around you. Tell me what it's like now going from waitressing, making $48,000, a year to over three hundred thousand dollars a year. What's what's changed for you? What has wholesaling now allowed you to experience in your life? Um. So my my family's from Ethiopia. My dad never went on vacation. His first vacation ever was when I sent them to Hawaii um, last year, and that was after twenty seven years of being in the United States. And mm -hmm. he never took a vacation. He was a taxi driver in Vegas, worked twelve hours a day. Um, it's okay. Sorry. I just get emotional thinking about him because, you know, he, he gave up his whole life for us just to raise us here. Mm -hmm. He had a life in Ethiopia, but he gave that up so we could have a good life. So if I do feel like it's my responsibility, but I'm so happy to be able to do it because when I was growing up, I thought I would have to be a doctor or a lawyer or something like that to be able to make money and take care of my family. And when I dropped out of college, I I just pretty much was like, I either have to be an entrepreneur or I'm going to be a waitress forever. Yeah. So I knew I couldn't take care of my family waitressing. But when your family doesn't have a plan, like you are the retirement plan. Yes. If your parents don't have a they don't know what an IRA is or <laughs> investing. They don't have any of that set up. So it's the, the, I love the pressure because it just makes me work harder and seek out opportunities to grow further. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, I do appreciate the burden. Like I see it as a, a, a silver lining on the cloud because without that, I don't even know if I would want to go this hard, you know? So it is a lot of responsibility, but there's, you know, some amazing people I'm doing it for my mom and my dad. How, what's your dad's response to this now? So he's seen you like literally elevate your dad worked hard in a labor heavy industry. Um, when you're in Vegas, one thing that I do know, I've had family who lives in Vegas and Vegas was like a second stomping ground for me at one point. 
hospitality is what's pushed yep. to you at a very young age. Yep. Like being a lead waitress at Caesar's Palace is like the epitome of making it right in Vegas. So now seeing you go from that lifestyle to now being a multiple six figure earner in real estate. Like what does your dad say about that? He's, he's so proud of me. Um, my mom was a waitress for 20 years mm -hmm. and my dad was a cab driver for 27. So they, that you're exactly right. My mom, when I started waitressing, she was heartbroken. She was like, you're going to be a waitress for the rest of your life. Like me. And I was like, no mom, I promise I'm not. I just, you know, I got this opportunity. I want to make money. Mm -hmm. And, um, now they are both so uh, so excited and proud, but you know they're parents, so they think everything is a huge risk. Yeah, like me getting on a flight out here was like, are you sure? Be careful. Do Who's you know those there? people? <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> Have you looked her up? What's her Instagram so I can stay on top of it? I get it. Share your location. Yes. Text us every address you're gonna be at. Are you sharing your location with them right now? Yes, absolutely. Every, my sister, my mom, and my dad. We're in a group chat and. I have permanent locations shared with them. They're still super overprotective, but um, they're very proud and they believe in me. It's nice for them to believe in me because when I dropped out of college, I was pretty much like, all right. Mm -hmm. I felt like they probably gave up on me, mm -hmm. but now it's nice to have that, the belief back in my family. And um, my dad is, is ready to like help me invest in real estate, look at houses. And he's like, just tell me what to do. I'm going to help you. Mm. So I'm, I'm excited. So is that the next step for you going from, uh, will you always, include wholesaling in your portfolio yes definitely i yeah. will never stop um direct to seller marketing it's mm -hmm. the it wouldn't make sense to it's it's so cost it's so i don't want to say cheap but it's so cost effective to do it and the reward is so huge mm -hmm. um there always needs to be somebody doing that in the business mm -hmm. what do you look for toddy when you're looking for a property to wholesale so i'm looking for a, a motivated seller who's willing to sell the property for less than what a cash buyer would pay. And that's based on the cash comparables on that RE Pro List website I told you about. Mm -hmm. You can literally click and see what other cash buyers bought houses for. So mm -hmm. if I see, okay, everybody bought houses for 60K, 70K, I'm going to try to get it under 60K. So even if it's 55, if I can sell it for 5,000 or $10,000, that's okay because there's going to be more than one deal a month. Mm -hmm. And if I can do five 5K deals, that's 25,000. What do you get? from it do you get the whole five so basically what you're doing when you're wholesaling is first things first you are looking at what other people are purchasing homes for in the area right okay exactly. so let's use the um sixty thousand dollar model let me do a hundred thousand just to keep my math mathing so they're purchasing properties for a hundred thousand dollars you find this seller you identify that they're motivated through the phone call yes okay so we've got this motivated seller and they owe sixty thousand dollars on the property. They're willing to sell it to you for eighty. So therefore, they make twenty thousand dollars. You're gonna sell it to someone for a hundred. You keep that whole twenty thousand dollars that you make from the eighty thousand dollars sales price. Yes. So now, right? My team would do that, and I would pay about. 30% of that out to my team for their individual tasks. And then I would keep 70% of that. Mm -hmm. So if it was $20,000, that would mean I would keep 14,000. Okay. And I would pay out 6,000. So just so the viewers understand, wholesaling is essentially saying, hey, I've got a motivated seller. You're an investor. This is what you do. They are willing to let this property, they're willing to sell this property at X percentage below current market value. Do you want it? They're going to say yes. And the deal is what as long as the seller gets what they want, anything you get over what they want is yours. 100 exactly. percent. And then you take that and you divvy it up to your team. Exactly. As salary. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you got it 100 percent. If if a seller is willing to take a certain amount and a buyer is willing to pay a certain amount, nothing else matters. We make everything in the middle. So it could be 10K. It could mm -hmm. be. 75k it could be 150k mm -hmm. it just depends on the deal um and then it gets really cool with land and commercial properties like even this one right here this is this would be a really cool place and we market for all of that we market for everything so you are never you trying know to pitch me get. right now are you <laughs> <laughs> we ain't for sale baby <laughs> No, but seriously. Well, okay. I mean, if you ever, you know, no, yeah, you know, we, we got you. We got you. Uh, we're, we're trying to buy more for the portfolio and keep them. But 
question. So now we've identified, we've got this list that we're dialing from. We get on the phone. That's how we determine if someone's motivated based on their, oh yeah, absolutely. I'm willing to sell. Um, you make this sale other than a motivated seller. What do you look for in property? Are you saying within a particular price point? Like what's your criteria? Well, in the beginning I did. In the beginning I was stayed under 100K and I only picked the hottest zip codes. So hot zip codes are just where the most buyer activity is happening. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe there's five zip codes that so many houses and whatever types of properties are being sold in. Those will be the zip codes that we stay in because there's no point to find a deal in an area that a buyer wouldn't want to buy in. Yeah. So we stick to those areas that buyers really like. Mm -hmm. And um, at first I did properties under 100K and that was more of a mindset thing. I was I didn't feel like I could do these expensive houses. But now we do everything. Mm -hmm. Do you focus on residential or residential commercial? You mentioned land. Residential and land. And then in that There is a lot of owners who also own commercial. Mm -hmm. So um, I've done like some 12 units and eight units and stuff like that with multifamily commercial. And um, I did one office. So not big on it, but if it happens and I'm able to sell it, then I'll definitely do it. Yeah. It seems like the the seller that would be most motivated in a situation like this is someone who happened upon a property that they didn't necessarily set out to buy in the first place, like through an inheritance, um, someone passed away. Maybe, maybe they uh, purchased the home, but their spouse or something happened in that home. They no longer want the home. Like what's the profile typically of a motivated seller? Um, That those are very, very motivated sellers, people who inherit properties. Um, Also tired landlords, Mm. or accidental landlords, we call them, when somebody tries to sell their house and they can't sell it, but they've already planned to make a move. Mm -hmm. And now they have this house, so they just rent it out. They're like, whatever, I'll just rent it out. Mm -hmm. But with being a landlord comes so many problems that they may not have expected. They didn't want to be a landlord. They just did it because they couldn't sell. So those are accidental landlords. Tired landlords are people who set out to be landlords, but they're exhausted. And the properties, maintaining properties is very expensive. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that can get overwhelming. Um, And then, of course, there's your occasional just slumlords who never cared about the property and nobody's paying rent because it's so messed up. Uh, They at some point will sell Mm -hmm. when they're not getting paid rent for a long time. Mm -hmm. So those are pretty much all of the profiles and um, vacant houses. So people who have moved, they haven't rented it out yet, but it's just sitting there. Okay. 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 And then you're getting the buyers through relationship in the beginning, Facebook groups. Okay. That's, that's my question. So if someone who's watching this says, you know what, I can sit at home and make a hundred phone calls a day until I find four or five people to talk to. I want to do this. If I find a motivated seller, I'm an introvert. I don't do anything. I don't know anybody. Where do I find the buyer to buy them? That's the best part because technology, it's so crazy that you say they had these books of people. I can't imagine what wholesaling was like back in the day because right now there's literally Facebook groups in every single city Mm -hmm. just for real estate investors. And all that happens is there's people posting deals. So all you have to do is just say, hey, I have a, a deal in this zip code. Does anyone buy there? And you get 20, 30 comments. And then all you have to do is call those people. You don't have to know anybody. And... Part of it is trusting your gut because you're going to see some people are weird or they might not have the best intentions. Mm -hmm. You have to protect yourself in a sense, but you can share the details of the house and they can decide if it's something that they want to move forward with. And it's that simple. I literally for the first year, I pretty much sold most of my deals on on Facebook groups. And um, the same way we pull seller lists, you can also pull buyer lists and then you can just call them. Mm. So today, fast forward three years later, are you still primarily getting the majority of your buyers from Facebook groups? No, now I, I've built um, a network of people that I can kind of just text and be like, hey, I have something you probably would want. And mm-hmm. then we can just sell it to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for as far as finding new buyers, we use a platform called Investor Lift. And it's it's so cool. It's pretty much like all the Facebook groups put together on steroids, all of the major investors and hedge funds, they all use uh, investor lift. So we'll post a deal on there and we'll start getting calls and and emails and stuff right away as well. Technology has grown so much over time. Like 
I'm listening to you and I'm listening to you drop all these resources, right? Here's where you can go to find the property. Here's what you can use to auto dial people. Here's where you can use to just post something and get access to all these buyers. Oh, and then here's a platform that allows you to have access to all these investors. Like there really is no excuse to not make money at this time. Like, it doesn't really even cost you a whole lot. If you had to put a number on it to become a wholesaler to start from scratch, what would be the initial startup investment? So my whole startup was under five hundred dollars, um, and that that could be it. It could just be five hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. And what part does that cover? Is that the dialer, the list, the dialer, getting the phone numbers, and then you would have to sell to Facebook groups um, over time. I would definitely say you want to, like you said, get more data and stuff like that. So typically when you're running an operation mm -hmm. and you're doing multiple deals a month, mm -hmm. you're going to be spending at least $5,000 a month. But in yeah. the beginning, just getting your first few deals and making some money to be able to start an operation, you could start off with $500 a month. I just say that have that and know that you're going to spend that for six months because if you don't get the deal the first month, you don't want to just throw all the resources away. You want to keep trying until you do get those deals. Yeah. Okay, so you've painted the picture. Wholesaling looks very attractive. Every now and then I get a guest who sits on this couch and I'm like, okay, I want to do what they do. Like, I want to figure out how to do what they do. And now I'm over here like wheels are spinning. Maybe I should start wholesaling. Maybe I should go back to that idea. But tell me the awful parts. What are the trash parts about being in this business? There's so many moving pieces that... Um so for you, you know, you have a full life, you have a full schedule. So for someone who's busy, the only way would be to hire a team. So you either a need to know hungry driven people that are just going to do the thing, mm -hmm. or you need to hire overseas virtual assistants for between four to $8 an hour. Okay. And you have to motivate them, mm. which is fine, you know, but that's the hard part is getting people to do something, how you would do it mm -hmm. is hard. Um, and then let's say you said, I'm going to sit down and do everything myself. You would have to put the time in. That's the hard part. The time, mm, the time. Yeah. Okay. So there's someone who's here. They don't even have to be a super successful entrepreneur. They could be, they could have a high level job or they could just be really, really busy in their job, not yet prepared to leave. They could actually deploy the same framework. They can get the list, pay for everything, hire VAs, like, I'm trying to make sure you guys get this right. You can literally be working your job like the cost of a VA is eight. You said eight to ten dollars an hour Four four to eight dollars an hour, four to eight dollars an hour. So let's just say you have a VA for six dollars an hour. How many hours a day would you have that VA uh, make? Are they making phone calls? They're making phone calls. So six to eight hours. So you could say 36 to 40 hours a week. Okay, so $6 an hour, that's the average cost of a VA. Let's just say 40 hours a week. That's $240 a week for the week. Let's do that times the month. That's under 1000 That's $960 for the month. Mm -hmm. Now, that's you paying somebody to wholesale property or to go through leads and find motivated sellers because they don't close the deal. They bring you the motivated seller, right? Yes. You could hire someone to close the deal too. They probably would be that closer to the $8 mark. Okay. Um, because they're going to be more skilled and wait a minute. Tiny. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Because I can outsource this whole you can thing. Outsource, you can outsource everything to overseas VAs. Every single I can last part of it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because I'm, I'm not asking for me. I'm not, I'm asking for them. I'm not asking for me. So I it's, want you guys to get this, crazy. right? Like I'm over here, I'm processing, and I want you guys to understand how my brain works. Immediately, we're at $960 for, keep this number for me, Brie, put 960 on the uh, calendar, uh, on, the, on the calculator. We're at $960. This is for the person who's going to make the call. And find the motivated seller, yes. And find the motivated seller. Yes. Then we have somebody, if, this is if we choose not to do the call, the, the sales call ourselves, mm -hmm. we've got a higher end VA that's going to require about $8 an hour. Yeah. How, and you probably want them to just do 36 hours a week. About 36 yeah. hours Six a week. Six hours a day would be enough for that because it's... That's $288. $288. Let's just say we find one deal and on a low end with your students. 
The oh. average deal is eleven thousand five hundred dollars profit to the wholesaler. That's the average wholesale deal. Okay, eleven thousand five hundred. Eleven thousand five hundred dollars is the average. Now, realistically, how long does it take your students, on average, to secure their first deal? It's so funny, and and this is not even me trying to like. When people actually do this for the six to eight hours a day, mm -hmm. it, it takes them thirty days or less so to find a first, deal. Let's just say in your first month. Yeah. It's going to take you a month. But this framework is assuming that you don't have the time to do the work because you've got a job. You don't want to leave your job. You're a busy entrepreneur, whatever. You're busy. You're doing stuff. 11,005 typically on your first deal, which yep. typically, not always, but which typically happens in your first 30 days. If strong emphasis on if you put in that six to eight hours a day on those phones or somebody does it for you. What was that total number? I'm sorry. 1248. Well, it was it was the it was the 900 and then the second number, the two something mm -hmm. that was times four. So that's that's uh, no, 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 no. Because you're paying them weekly. Remember? Yeah. So we're paying six dollars for 40 hours Thir to 240. That's already times four. the 960 is what I gave you. Yep. That's plus. already times four. And then we did the eight times the 36 times four, times four. is 1152. So add 1152 to the nine. 60. There you go. What's that number loudly? Minus 2112. So you have a net profit of $9,388. Yeah. You're working your job right now. This is for you. This is not for me. Okay. <laughs> You're working your job right now. You are bringing in, what's the average income in the United States these days? Let's just say $50,000. You're bringing in 50, what's 50,000 divided by 12? 6,000, no, what's 50,000 divided by 12? Forty-one dollars $4,166 that you're making on your job that you might like, you might not like, whatever, doesn't matter. You take $1,200. You go out and hire you a team. You have them on the phone because this is their job. So they're going to work those six to eight hours a day. You find your first property on average, $11,000 profit. You end up bringing in $9,388 profit for yourself. Now you have the money to pay VAs for the next four, five, six months Yep. to do this very same thing. Yep. Now, I'm not telling you to run out and go wholesale properties and all of this stuff. I'm just telling you what I'm about to do. Um, <laughs> right now you're, you're doing this number. You've got the four or $5,000 that you're making on your job. Plus this, now you're starting to open up doors for freedom money. Now you're bringing in 14,000, $15,000 a month having somebody else do the hard part of the work. Where are you getting your VAs? Is this online jobs.ph? Um, or Upwork. Um, or I, I have a uh, system where I go into virtual assistant Facebook groups mm. and I, I say, you know, I'm paying this much an hour. Please email me your voice. I'm going to give you like the game game, right? Email me your voice recording. The first thing I'm doing is listen to the voice recording because if you don't have a clear enough accent, I don't even want to waste the time interviewing you. Mm -hmm. Then everybody who has a clear accent, I'd give them a time and a day for a Zoom call for everybody. So I'll try to get like 30 people on there. Inevitably, most of them don't show up and eight might show up. Mm -hmm. And then out of the eight, I talk to them and I see if we have if they have conversation chemistry, because it's important to have someone who can have a back and forth like this and they're not reading a script. Literally, you mm. know what I mean? So they need to be able to have a, a conversation with somebody in English mm -hmm. and it flow mm -hmm. and whoever flows goes and they come on the scene. And, you know, you said you were buying properties. Mm -hmm. So imagine you put the property type that you want in that list mm -hmm. and you spend that twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars a month having a team lock those deals up for you. You buy what you like and you wholesale the rest. You buy what you like. You you better preach a word. I buy what I like. I pay somebody twelve, fifteen hundred <laughs> I pay you two thousand dollars a month. All right, <laughs> find me some deals. Yeah, and these are people who, because somebody's thinking like, well, why wouldn't they just buy the property? They're in another country, and it doesn't really work right, the right. same way. These VAs who are making a call for you, they're from like um, Ecuador, the Philippines, wherever. Mm -hmm. They're not worried about these deals. They want to make an hourly wage and feed their family. Mm. Now, how do you need to equip a VA? So we get the VAs. What do I need to? What tools? 
do they need to have access to? So they need that dialer system um, that we were talking about. This is virtual wholesaling. This is virtual wholesaling. This is virtual. Not only is this virtual wholesaling, this is hands off. This is this is virtual wholesaling with the team. It's I don't want to say hands off because you will have to check in. You know what I mean? Like have some meetings. Yeah, some have meetings. meetings. Make sure they're doing what they should be doing. Make sure results are happening. Mm -hmm. Results are the most important thing. So if they're getting leads and they're having quality conversations, deals will come from that. Mm -hmm. So just you all you need to do is manage and, and watch over. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's um, you're not doing the actual grunt work. And it's not just virtual wholesaling. Now you're for you, let's say somebody like you, you're real estate investing because you're looking for, and this is what a lot of investors do. They have a team finding their deals. They buy what they like and then they wholesale the rest and the wholesale money pays for their team and then some pocket money and maybe some rehab money. Mm. And now they're getting ownership too. So it doesn't have to be like a situation like me where you need income. So you just go crazy making income. For me, it became a business. Yeah. But for some people, this is they're just marketing to buy their own deals because let's say you bought a deal from a wholesaler, you're going to pay a $20,000 assignment fee to me when you buy a deal when you could have got that yourself for that $1,400, $1,300 a month system. Mm, okay, so we got the VA. Yep. How do we prepare them and equip them to do a good job? So they need a script. They need role playing. So in these... Facebook groups or onlinejobs.ph, Upwork, whatever you use. Most of them, if you're hiring a real estate VA, they have some type of experience. So they know the conversation. But they just need a script. They need to role play. And they need to know their expectations. And they need to know they're being watched. So a tool like Time Doctor, mm -hmm. it watches their screen. It tracks their hours, something like that to make sure they know that they're being held accountable to their task mm -hmm. and that's really it. And then at least like two meetings a week to check in um, and they need the leads, but the same person who cold calls, you can teach them how to like pull the list and skip trace it and put it into the dialer themselves so mm -hmm. they can handle everything. Um, once they actually get the deal under contract, now you can choose to buy it or you can have those same VAs post it and sell it. Mm, okay. So you're literally training them on the entire process. What does what does a goal look like for your team? So beginning of a new month, what's the goal? Like how many leads or deals are you expecting a month? So the goal is uh, 50K in revenue mm -hmm. minimum. Mm -hmm. And the goal for, t t so when we reverse engineer it, it's typically about five deals mm -hmm. because the average is 11,500 minus the marketing, I'll say 10K. Mm -hmm. um, so the goal is at least five deals a month. Mm -hmm. And then the number of leads per deal, it's basically about 25 leads for every one deal. Mm -hmm. So to get five deals, that's about 525 leads. Okay. Five times 25. So, um, to get 525 leads, that's about 120 just, yes, I want to sell, like, yeah. people a week. Yeah. So that, for me, it does take, like, six VAs to get that many. Mm -hmm. um, but everyone's goal doesn't have to be as lofty. And then some months we crush the 50K, we do better. And some months we do 20, 30, you know. But it, it doesn't really matter because all those people that say, yes, I want to sell, later down the line, we call it a long-term follow-up. They want to sell six months later. Yeah. A lot of our deals we're doing now came from 2021. Mm -hmm. So eventually it's everybody sells. It's a pipeline, exactly. Yeah. Everybody sells at some point. If they ever said yes, Typically, what I've learned that they're doing is, okay, if somebody is approaching me in this way, let me try. Let me list the property. Let yep. me talk to some people. Yep. And then when the property doesn't <laughs> sell, six months later, a year later, they want to come back. Like, let me call that girl who blah, 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 blah. So you have about six VAs that are doing this, but you can start with one VA. Yes. Obviously, at, with one VA, depending on the type of properties that you're strategically focused on, you may not make 50 grand in revenue, but you can definitely make like nine, 10, 11,000. For sure. For yeah, sure. For sure. A hundred percent. And, and if you guess, if you're the one making the sales calls, it's going to be even more. Mm -hmm. If you take three hours a day and you actually call those six leads they generated that day, mm -hmm. you're going to have a better closing ratio mm -hmm. and you're going to do more deals and you're going to make more money. Yeah. So if you can, if you can spend that 500 bucks, a thousand bucks a month, um, $1,500 a month and also put in the three hours a day, mm -hmm. you can, perfect example, I have a mentee, TK. She is actually an assistant to a fashion designer. She uh, She's a stylist and she helps the fashion designer. So she has a full-time job. But 
when she got off work every single day in July, she was making these calls for three, four hours a day. And she made $23,000. So she was able to do more than the average mm-hmm. because she was also putting the work in. She wasn't just having VAs do everything. Mm-hmm. So an, an American person is going to have a better chance at closing a deal, especially like if you're from Georgia and you're calling people in Georgia. Yeah, you know, the relatability, the, the accent. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That makes a difference. I mean, it, it's the same effect of if you call into your cell phone company and you get someone who's clearly not from America. Yes. You get frustrated. Like people get frustrated immediately. Like, here we go with this slow conversation. And I got to really pay attention to understand what people are saying. So I get that that makes sense. Have but you ever called Airbnb? Never. For no reason. So they have Filipino VAs mm-hmm. and they sound pretty clear Mm -hmm. but it's so frustrating because they can't talk to you like how we're talking right now there is that big gap yeah it's the it's so i've not ever called airbnb but i've had vas before in the past that were filipino and it's like you're talking you're having this conversation you're so upbeat and then there's this long (laughs) weird pause waiting for the response like did you hear me hello what's going on um yeah so i get it and that part can be frustrating but still At the same time, there's still a huge benefit because I believe in America, we're being conditioned to speak to foreign customer service representatives. we definitely are. We definitely are. For sure. Like, it's cheap labor, Mm -hmm. right? And these large companies have outsourced, especially since the pandemic, they have outsourced their United States labor to people in the Philippines and Egypt and Jamaica and all these places, Ecuador, um, that work for really inexpensive labor. So it's just one of those things that, you deal with. Yep. And then in, in your hiring process, again, you're making sure they have some kind of conversation flow. So you're bringing the best person on that you can. Mm-hmm. So you're mitigating that as much as you can with the seller. So you still can definitely get a lot of deals that way. Mo- most of our deals come to us through virtual assistants. They get closed by virtual assistants. And uh, we do have a couple American sales staff, but the, the virtual assistants have a lot of work ethic because it's how they feed their family. Yes. We have so many options here in the U.S. You could go drive Uber. You can do whatever. So sometimes somebody in America sitting in that seat, it's hard for them to, to do that for that long. I remember one year, um, this had to be like 2017. I was utilizing a virtual assistant as my assistant at that time. Total disaster, by the way. <laughs> um, and mostly because of me needing things done when someone's your personal assistant, at least in my kind of business, I don't necessarily have office hours. So if something comes up, we early hours of our morning, that's like usually super late at night, right? Their time or vice versa. Anyway. So I remember getting her set up on a payroll system and I had tried to do it, set up the payroll, but I thought I had an issue and the payroll company went in and did it too. And so she was double paid her very first paycheck. And let's just say it was like an overpayment of like $250, right? Because the labor is really inexpensive. But she was double paid and such good work ethic. She reached out immediately. Like I had an email waiting and she's she's being apologetic. Oh my God, Miss Donnie, I don't know what happened. I'm so sorry, but I received too much money. So I'm looking at it and I realized she had been overpaid $250. Like it was her double payment. And I said, don't worry about it. She had done a great job. Don't worry about it. Just keep it. Because it was also too much of a process for her to send it back, right? (laughs) Like, by the time you send it back to me, the fees that I'm being, like, it it was a lot. So I said, don't worry about it. Just keep it. She sent me the longest love letter email. So grateful. So thankful. Literally telling me how I've changed her family's life forever. And... It just makes you think I had a guest um, on the show, Jeremy Anderson. I had a guest on the show and he said, I am sitting on this couch in comfort, getting to do what I love while somebody else is like risking their life or in significant pain at the same time. And it kind of brings you back to that moment, giving somebody the opportunity, like, absolutely, we need the jobs here in America. And we obviously hire, you know, Americans. But that doesn't mean that we can't tap into these other areas and provide opportunities for them as well. That's just something that will stay with me forever. Like she literally felt like $250 was life changing. That is absolutely insane. So 
like yourself, if you are in an opportunity to both have American staff and really serve here, like the fact of the matter is $250 for the week might be your budget. Exactly. And you're not going to find it in the United States of the America in most cases, right? Most people don't want to work for that. So you do have options. Um, I had a VA when I was still working my full-time job in 2014 for my uh, real estate industry company at that time. I was a locator. Um, I owned a company that was a locator for movie industry cast and crew oh, wow. to find housing here in Atlanta, Georgia. That's cool. And I didn't always have the time to reach out to these properties um, to see if we could negotiate the deal. So I had a VA. I created a framework like here are the properties of interest. Here's the budget. Here are the parameters. Here's what needs to happen in terms of security and access and all that stuff. And my VA literally called I was paying that person I think like three dollars an hour at that time this yeah. was back in 2014 2013 2014 I'm paying this person like three dollars an hour to make these calls to go through that whole list to see what be what would be appropriate to show these clients and close the deal I built a multiple six-figure company doing that like guys we got to start thinking outside of the box really and having access like you said um, to creating these virtual model businesses um, is a way to do that. But I really love what you're doing because you've created a virtual model business with a high yielding revenue return. That's crazy. So you literally already did it. But instead of sourcing rentals for the actors, just replace that with people who want to sell their house. Yeah. And you already ran that type of business. So that's amazing. You just gave me a completely, <laughs> I never thought about wholesaling from a virtual standpoint. And when I mean, when I say virtual, I'm talking about doing it from home virtually, but even taking it to the next level and hiring virtual staff to oh my run gosh. it. I never thought about it from that perspective. It's changed my life. And you know, as a mom, as a mom entrepreneur, you especially when your kids are little, you battle that guilt of like, oh, I'm always working. You know, my first year and a half when I was doing everything, I felt like a horrible mom because I'm always grinding and I have to make this life for us. And I felt really bad about that. But leveraging virtual assistants and systems has given me like now I work four hours a day and that's with content and Mm -hmm. wholesaling that's everything I do mm -hmm. and I get to do everything with my kids if they want to go to the park it's not oh I have to work I get to do it yeah. and that's it's been such a blessing I never thought that I'll be able to be spending this much time with mm -hmm. my kids so mm -hmm. especially for parents who feel that like my making money is taking me away from being with my babies mm -hmm. this business model is crazy yeah it takes work it takes effort it takes time but once you lock in it's like You've literally unlocked a cash machine yeah. and now you have time freedom to actually do the things you enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. I love that. So not only are you running a multi six figure business in the actual industry of wholesaling, you also teach people and mentor them. Uh, talk to me about like the success. How, first of all, how long have you been teaching people for money. I know that you mentioned you were putting stuff on YouTube, but when did this become an actual extension of your business? So it's been a, a little about a year and a half now. So at the end of 2021, November, 2021 is when I officialized it. And I was like, all right, I'm spending way too much time doing this kind of for free. Mm -hmm. um, so let me, let me make this an actual program. And that was my first, first month actually helping people hands on. I took on 10 people and, um, this guy, Jim, he was working at McDonald's. He was a manager for 10 years. And he's my one of my favorites because he was like, I feel like like less of a man. I'm not as advanced as other men. And he was in L.A. So virtual wholesaling is perfect for people like L.A., New York, Miami. You can't really do it where you live anyway because properties are too expensive. Mm -hmm. So he was trying to wholesale for two years in L.A. while he was working at McDonald's. Failed. The second day trying in Oklahoma, which is what he picked as his virtual market, he got a deal. And he made $12,500 in like his first three months and he quit McDonald's. Mm, of course. <laughs> of course he <laughs> quit, quit McDonald's. Absolutely. And now he's doing five, six deals a month. And he's, I mean, his business is just like mine. He's, mm. All of my students make as much money as me once they start, or some of them more. Mm -hmm. Some of them more because they 
they can. <laughs> I'm still on this virtual uh, thing, right? Yeah, like, I'm it's still crazy. There. And I'm thinking about it. You said something else that stood out for me. Like, obviously, if you can employ Americans to be in that same position, you'd make more money. Yes. Now, and that's literally you would because they speak the language. Yes. And there's no language barrier. So I'm even thinking that once you build a portfolio like Jim um, and you have these properties coming in, you can now leverage, you can afford to pay Americans. Like you're making enough money to, if that's really important, because for some people they're like, I only want to employ Americans. Okay, well, great. Start how you have to start and then let that be a goal. I want to employ someone who's in the United States that can make these calls. There are people who are qualified. Fantastic. Now you can do that after you get in, like after you learn how to do five and six deals a month, you have the budget to do it. If that's your goal, you can. And there are some there are some roles that would be good for salary. But to be honest with you, even if you're hiring American people, sales, because I did timeshare sales, people do car sales, everything is commission. Everything. S salary is the death of a salesperson. For sure. You're not going to have motivation if you have salary to Bri really, really. Did I not just tell you this? Like every single job I had was commission. Commission. Offer me a salary and the answer is no. When I was working in corporate America, I'm good. Really? I was never afraid of, oh, this job only pays 50000 but you can get commission. As long as you say, but you can get commission. Yes. I'm on it. Yes. So you Give can do me. a small salary, but always make the bigger part of their money the commission mm -hmm. so that they can actually want to work. But yeah, definitely. You can definitely start hiring American people if you choose to do so. And you can build, build your business that way. There's people, there's so many different types of real estate operations. The beauty of it is you can do whatever fits into your lifestyle. Mm. For me, this is great because of my lifestyle right now. I'm focused on being a parent, mm -hmm. but five years from now, when my kids don't want to hang out with me, who knows, maybe mm -hmm. I'll do something different. Well, if that, if that's the case, like this is really conducive to your lifestyle. Why even, open up the door to mentoring because I'm a coach. I'm busy. Why, if the idea is to stay home, be a parent, be present, why coach? Why mentor? Well, my mentorships are also virtual too. So mm -hmm. everything is on the computer, Zooms. Um, and the only reason I started is because people kept asking me. And then I was also, I love creating content. So if you like, that's the part I like. Mm -hmm. I like creating content. But if you're not monetizing your content somehow, it's kind of a waste of time. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Just growing a following for fun, you yeah. know? So there has to be some type of a return. And then people kept asking me for help. And when I helped a few people and I saw how much it changed their life, I was like, okay, maybe I don't love the sales part of wholesaling, but maybe this was God's path for me to do something I do like doing, which I love teaching and I love creating. So mm -hmm. now I'm doing something that's fun for me, mm -hmm. even when, um, and I have it structured to where it doesn't take up all my time as well. You know, we have our, our coaching calls and I help people out one-on-one -on -one a little bit, but, um, this, this business model is just plug and play. Mm -hmm. Like it's simple enough that someone overseas can do it. Mm. It's simple. It's simple. It's simple. It's simple. Yeah, it's very simple. So it's not like I think with business coaching, it's so much more in depth because you're struggling with also people's perceptions and mentalities. It's like counseling probably is yeah. what I imagine. Yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it is for sure like that. Sometimes. With this, it's like it's four steps. Are you doing the steps? OK, you're not doing that. Maybe you, maybe you should be doing that. Oh, I know it's because you're doing that. And then they go take the ball. They run with it. And there's results. Mm -hmm. As long as there is results then then we're good. Are you able to track like what percentage of your students get results? I know sometimes that's dif difficult to do if you're not uh, surveying the whole community. Yeah. But do you guys have something set up where you can do that? So I have in total 128 mentees overall, right? And then of that, so this, I'm in a full transparency, right? Full transparency, not everybody tries. So for sure, we have these bi-weekly coaching calls and how many people actually show up right between 15 and 25 every mm -hmm. every time we do a coaching call it's between 15 and 25 people but out of those people that show up out of the 15 there's at least nine or ten that are consistently doing deals mm -hmm. and there's about 30 people out of the 128 who have done deals so whether it's become a business or not is more dependent on I had one student, he did a commercial deal for 135000 and he stopped, he never wholesaled again. 
That's he opened he up a business that he wanted to open up. Yeah. So a lot of people, they'll do that. They'll make some money and they'll use it because like we just talked about, it is intensive. If you're the one on the phone, a lot of people will take the money and they'll open up what they really want to do anyway. Mm. So, um, TK, for example, she's continuing to do wholesaling because she enjoys it. Mm -hmm. Jim's continuing because he enjoyed it. Uh, Andy, who's also a single mom, she's continuing because she enjoyed it. But a lot of people get that 50K or 80K or whatever it is, and they're off to, to the next thing. And then they just pop back into the chat sometimes to just tell us how their life is going. But if it's so <laughs> simple and so lucrative, why stop? It's simple and lucrative, but it's time consuming unless you hire a team, right? But when you hire a team, you still need to be tracking their KPIs and monitoring them and training them and making sure they're doing the things. And mm -hmm. if they start to fall off, it can be hard for people to manage that and also do their their dream, mm. whatever their dream is, like opening up a coffee shop or opening up an Amazon store, or starting a clothing brand. You know, people have these dreams. Yeah. And I'm not doing that to be funny or anything, but people have dreams. <laughs> um, I'm the type of person that... I don't have to love it if it makes me a lot of money, mm -hmm. but some people it makes them a lot of money, but it's hard. So yeah. they don't want to keep doing it. I go back and forth with that. <laughs> I do really um, blessed to be able to um, do the things that I love for money. Right. But also because I'm able to do the things that I love for money, there is a need for certain things that I don't really love to do, but my community could benefit from it greatly. Um, and it's like, do I do it? Do I bring somebody else in to do it? I just love having the op the option to choose, you know, what it is that I'm doing and don't. So I fully understand. I fully get that. I have walked away from many lucrative opportunities because I just flat out don't want to. Yeah. And the second thing is if you don't have a pipeline and the deals dry up because you made 50 K and then you went on vacation, it's hard to gain momentum again and start back up. And I think a lot of people, when they do their first deals, if they don't have the mindset of this is going to be my business, they're like, mm -hmm. all right, I made money. I'm going to do something else now. They're not worried about wholesaling anymore. Now they saw their seed money. I think everybody wants to be making a lot of money doing what they love and marketing and sales, which is what Wholesaling is marketing and sales. Marketing and sales isn't necessarily it for everybody. Mm, that's true. That's true. Sales, talking to the people. But when you say marketing, what kind of marketing are you doing in wholesaling? The uh, So marketing would be the cold calls, the text messages, the mail. That's marketing. Yeah, that okay. would be the marketing. What percentage would you say of your leads, your viable leads, are coming from cold calls versus mailing? That was the part, honestly, Toddy, that was so unattractive to me. I'm not sending all these people mail. It's like, expensive. <laughs> mail is very expensive. It is expensive. Like, do you do that? I do. So I do mail and I only mail those very high motivators. So the inherited with a lien. So it's like specific things that I'm going to mail because they're going to be smaller lists. So we have county records. So in each county that we market in, um, there's probably between 200 and 500 a month. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot. Mm -hmm. So we can send out. 1,000, 2,000 mailers every month, no problem. But if mm -hmm. you're trying to mail that 10,000 list, no way. You're going to be spending so much money. It's not going to be worth it. Yeah. So we'll mail the highest of motivated. And then um, I'll say out of five deals a month, maybe one will come from that. Three will come from cold calls. And the fourth will prob uh, the fourth and the fifth might come from um, referrals or JVs. So mm -hmm. people who have seen me on Instagram or my students who need help now selling a deal, I'll help them sell a deal and that'll be a deal a month or two deals a month as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, first of all, I will say that I am usually, well, not even what I'm usually, but real estate specifically when we start getting into the coaching and the mentoring can become really tricky yes. right now. Yes. Because there are a lot of people who are teaching real estate that have never actually done, which is why I have so many questions about, because this is our first time meeting. We're just being fully transparent, right? Um, you came highly recommended, um, but this is our first time meeting, but I'm asking so many questions about the process because I want to know that you really do this. Like, this is what you do. And you appear to really, really do this. But I kind of want to prove the concept. Yeah. I want to prove it. Um, 
what I would love to do is um, we don't we don't do like hard pitches and stuff on the full transparency podcast. That's one of the ways that we stand out. Like the audience doesn't have to worry about being sold, sold, sold to. Well, what if we what if we took them on a journey and showed them like the whole process of wholesaling a property from this seat, from this interview to wholesaling a property. Maybe by the time they see this, we would have done a deal and we can prove that concept. Yeah. And then go uh, f- follow up. Like we're running out of time on this episode, but like follow up maybe with a YouTube live video and kind of show them the steps of what happened. I think that would be fun. I would, I would love to, I would love to. And you know what is so cool? I can show you right now. Okay. Um, so this, so I just want you to just read a few of these messages. This is a deal that we just closed uh, Where am I starting? last week. You can start with, um, they're finalizing the HUD, the first one in the blue. Okay. So I told, so that guy's Richard. He's one of the sellers um, mm-hmm. in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. And I told him, hey, we're finalizing the HUD. We're closing, blah, 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 right? And he goes, okay. Oh, let me read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Everything's looking good. We should close Friday or Monday, but I'll keep you updated. Just waiting for water sewer and finalizing the HUD statements. Any updates? Hi, Richard. Yes. So they're a little delayed on some paperwork, but we are closing next week for sure. I'm waiting on an exact date from Noah at the title company. And then your next message was good morning. I just wanted to check back in with you. I hope everything is good. I'm glad we were able to close that smoothly last week. So that went from, I'm going to do the time frame on that. So without dating the episode, that was a process that took exactly two weeks. That was exactly a 14 day period from the, we should be closing next week. Looked like there was a one week delay, two weeks, the deal closed. And then Richard says, sorry, everything went great. I have another property if you were interested in taking a look at it. Yep. And I say, okay. And then I ask him for the address. He sends me the address. And that was today. And I told him, I'm a little busy today because of this. Yeah. But I'm going to call him tomorrow. He gave me the address. And um, so it's clearly a a condo, which comes with drawbacks. But I can look it up. I can see what it's worth. And tomorrow I'm going to call him and I'm going to make him an offer. And we're going to do another deal. Repeat business is rare in wholesaling. But sometimes it happens. And Mm -hmm. um. This was a good deal. It was a 15K assignment fee. Mm-hmm. So that was great. And um, this next one, we'll see what it what it turns out to be. Richard is the seller? This is seller, yeah. Okay. And the his name, I saved him as Richard and then the address. Mm-hmm. That was the address we actually already closed the deal on. Richard is the seller. You're going to make him a deal. You're making him a deal because you already know that you have because, a buyer? Because I already know him. Because I already know I have a buyer. And because, so when this deal came in, he was one of those people that's a little shaky with the virtual assistants. Mm -hmm. He wasn't really feeling it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I called him. When they said, I don't know, this guy, he seems like he wants to sell, but he's like, he's kind of hesitant. And I listened to the call. And this is what I mean by you need to be like paying attention to what your team is doing. Mm -hmm. I listened to the call and it just sounded like he didn't trust them. So mm. I gave him a call yeah, and he trusted me because I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So we did, the, I, I ended up just closing the deal. We Literally, I called him once. I called him the next day again to follow up and we signed the agreement the next day. But I want to be clear when you say you ended up closing the deal. Um, he's the seller. He's a seller. You are the wholesaler. Yes. But it sounds like you purchased these deals and you're going to sell it at a later time. Yes. So okay. ba- it's called a double close. So basically you buy it and you sell it in the same day. Yeah. So we already sold it. The day that we closed on it, we already sold it. Hmm. That's what wholesaling is. The day. The same day. Why wouldn't you, okay, why wouldn't you just have the buyer buy the property directly? Because why would they pay you? You know what I mean? If you connected the buyer and the seller, right? Okay, so is that the process all the time? So in order for this to work, do I have to buy the property first? So the title company, right? So it's called a double close Mm -hmm. using the end buyer's funds. So the title company, right? It's one day. The seller comes in, he signs his paperwork. Mm -hmm. You sign some paperwork. The buyer signs some paperwork. They use the buyer's money to close both transactions. That's why it's called a double close. So you don't need the money to do this type of transaction. But let's just say you were like, hey, Richard, this is James and he's going to buy your house. Yeah, we're not going to do that. You're not going to do that because why would they pay you? Right. So that's that's the part. 
I'm getting confused in the language and yeah, yeah. I'm getting confused. I know they're getting confused. Yep. So a double close is not always the route that you go. So there's there's an assignment. Okay. So I get a, an agreement with you and I just assign it to them. That's to one. To the seller. To the, the seller. The, the seller signs an agreement with me and, and then I sign an agreement with the buyer. Okay. And I assign it. When Either you, way, though, the buyer is the one putting the money up. Understood. But when you are assigning the contract, it's yeah. literally you doing an agreement. A, a purchase agreement. Exactly. You assign it to the set to the buyer. So yep. now they're in purchase, but yeah. then how in that case, do you guarantee that you get your fee? The, Cause everything goes through the title company. So you never tell the seller, Hey, so I the, have a buyer for your house. Right. Because that's until you do. You never tell them I have a buyer. So the whole time they think it's you. Yeah. The whole time they, they, they think your company is the one buying houses. So, you know, those we buy houses signs, yeah. they're not actually buying it and keeping it. They got a buyer. They on have a buyer on the assigning. other hand that they're assigning it to. If you told somebody, I have a buyer for your house. What's the next thing? Who's the buyer? Who's the buyer? How much do I have to pay you? Mm -hmm. You're and, and then you're also doing real estate without a license. <laughs> yeah. You're literally acting as an agent without a license. Mm -hmm. So using an assignable contract and using a double close is how you're able to then resell their house the same day. So it's tricky, but essentially you are buying it or assigning it, mm -hmm. but you are the, the person they need to be talking so to. So the to get title the deal company done. would treat your fee the same as they would treat as a real estate, the same way they treat a realtor's commission. No, because a realtor's commission would be based on a percentage. This is based on the spread we're able to create. Understood. But what guarantees that you get your money? Because we have the agreement with the seller. Which is what I'm... So it's a legal agreement. Exactly. And the title company is going to pay you out. Exactly. Based on that, whatever's in that agreement. Exactly. The title... And it's perfectly legal to do without you being a real estate agent. A hundred percent. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to clear. Yeah. Up. So okay. let's say you wanted to buy a house for me and you just knew me and I was your friend. Mm -hmm. You'd get an agreement with me and say mm -hmm. you want to buy my house for $20,000. And let's say a week goes by and your brother is like, you're going to buy that house? I'll give you 30000 for it. And you're like, shoot, I, I'm about to buy it for twenty. You can just assign it to him and you can make 10,000 without having to come out of pocket on it. Otherwise, you'd be buying it for 20,000 and paying closing costs and then selling it the next day and making no money. And making you you could make 30,000 but minus two sets of closing costs, right. which you're no making money. now 6,000 <laughs> or whatever. So, in using these methods, um that's why wholesaling it's really an exit strategy and we've made it into a business. Investors will get a bunch of deals under contract and wholesale the ones they don't want to close on themselves. Yeah. So we've essentially turned that this wholesaling industry has come from turning that into a business model. Mm -hmm. I just love how we've come into spaces and just started learning information. Like I'm just thinking about my time as a realtor in my twenties and thirties. And I worked a lot with investors and I, you just said something that triggered a memory. Like I worked a lot with investors who were doing, you know, rehabs, flips, whatever, but they buy these properties. And I'd always wonder like, how on earth do you have the money to keep buying all these dang on properties? Mm -hmm. And they were wholesaling property, mm -hmm. but I never wanted to be a part of that transaction because I didn't understand it. Yep. And sometimes we just miss out on so much, un uh, so much opportunity for the lack of understanding. Like I thought it was a waste of my time. I don't want to be involved. I don't want to help. I don't want to blah, 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 blah. And so, and then also <laughs> the wholesaler, the investor probably said, I don't want to involve a real estate agent in the wholesaling part of this process. So I would show them all these properties. They buy up everything, I guess, get whatever numbers and quotes on rehab and, you know, rental possibility, rental income possibility. And then they pick the ones or two that they want and wholesale the rest. I never had a desire to be a part of that part of the contract because, or the, the deal, because I didn't understand it. Most real estate agents don't, most people don't understand it, which is why you don't just lay it out. It's not that you're trying to lie and say, Hey, I'm going to buy your house when you know you're not. Because when I first told my mom about this, she was like, that's illegal. That's a hundred percent illegal. You're saying you're going to buy a house but you're not the one buying it. And it it sounds bad when you say it like that, right? But it's because nobody's going to understand that. No one's going to understand that whole process. You have to break it down. Like, if you know that a buyer is going to buy it, 
Or if you had the money to buy it and you would, because at the end of the day, there's so many different ways to buy a property. You could get a loan. You could buy it cash. Um, if a deal was so good, like I said, I would buy it. I've bought properties and then listed them on the MLS because I knew they were going to make so much more money than if an investor bought it. So you wholesaling, you really have to think of it as an exit strategy. If I don't want to keep a deal, I'm going to wholesale it, right? Mm -hmm. But you can wholesale most of your deals and only keep the ones that are the best. They call it cherry picking. Mm -hmm. um, so really, it's not... It's 100% legal. Every single major investment firm, including all the hedge funds, including all the big names that you know, everybody wholesales. Yeah, I mean, I literally just looked it up. I know that wholesaling is legal, but um, because of where we are with real estate and uh, the, the, the education of it and all this stuff, I want to just let you guys know. So uh, wholesale real estate, meaning in real estate wholesaling, a wholesaler puts a seller's home under contract and then finds an interested investor to buy it. In your case, you already know who the interested investor is. Right. So it's an automatic assignment, almost instantaneous assignment. The wholesaler then assigns their rights in the contract to the new buyer at a higher price than the price contracted with the seller. And the wholesaler keeps the difference. Exactly. That's all you're doing. That's it. It's That's just it. assigning. It's selling paper. That's why they call it paper. The, like you'll hear it called paper flipping. You'll hear it called selling contracts. But all you're doing is selling your interest in in the agreement. Yeah. And if the good was if the deal was so good, nine times out of ten you would buy it. Yeah. If it's a steal, mm -hmm. um, once we had a, a deal that we were able to buy it for sixty thousand, and I knew we would get ninety five thousand from a homeowner because it was moving ready. But investors were only willing to pay like 70 mm -hmm, because they need to make a profit. I found a hard money lender. I put $2,000 down on that hard money loan and I listed it and I sold it in two weeks. Mm. So I will buy it. You can buy it and flip it or do whatever you want to it. But wholesaling is an exit strategy and every investor wholesales some of their deals. Most investors wholesale enough deals to pay for the ones they want to keep. It offsets everything and it keeps cash flowing into their business. Well, that's immediately what I am thinking about doing it for. Not, I mean, obviously it brings in, it generates income, but it allows you the money that you need, like with these 15, 20, and sometimes 30% uh, down payments. If, if you're buying commercial yep, yep. wholesaling property seems like one of the fastest outside of acquiring some type of funding. Yep. It seems like one of the fastest ways to generate capital to put money down. Like it seems like the ultimate leverage strategy. It is. Mm -hmm. And then imagine you, you come up on a, a deal that's an 80 K assignment fee. Mm. Now you just really paid for the whole down payment for this big project that you want. And that's what most investors use it as, but it's the age of information and social media and people hacked it and they turned it into a business model and they turn it into get into real estate without any money. People have been wholesaling for 40, forever. forever, 40, 50 years before any of us were born in this room, yeah. but no one ever talked about it. Mm -hmm. Now it's all over. And then it allows everyone's kind of opinions and miscon misconstruing the concept of it. But that's, when they talk about get into real estate with no money, no credit, it's, it's all wholesaling. About. It's all wholesaling. <laughs> all right. So we've, we've got work to do because I want to prove um, this concept. Let's go. For sure. I'm excited. So what does that mean? What does that look like? So we have a clear plan of action. So you want to find a commercial building or what do you know, exactly? I, it can be small. I don't, I just, I want to prove proof a concept, a concept of the wholesaling concept and specifically that, you are the educator to help teach this concept. For sure. So do you want to like shadow in my business? Mm -hmm. Is that more so? Like shadow one of the deals we're doing? Do I have that kind of time? I don't know what that looks like. I mean, <laughs> like, like you. Mm, sounds like work. <laughs> you want me to like. Um, so here's what I want to do. Follow, you know, the trail of a deal from it being a lead to getting under contract, to, to a buyer. What I would like to do, I'm not going to, bef between now and the time that this episode drops, I will probably likely not have a VA and everything in place. Exactly, because, that's what I was saying. It's, it's yeah, kind of a lot. <laughs> because I have other things happening in my business. But let's prove the concept of a busy professional who can make time to get this done. Um, maybe we will shadow. I don't know. Let's 
at the end of the day, before this episode drops, we will have found, is that realistic to say we will have found and closed on a property? How long for an episode to drop? At least 30 days. 30 days. It's possible. 30 to 45 days is likely. Um, okay. But we have deals in the pipeline, you know, like we just got one under contract yesterday in Georgia. Mm -hmm. So we can definitely, um, I can send you the agreement for that, that we, that was dated. You know what I mean? Like I can, we can shadow a full deal in our pipeline mm -hmm. um most definitely that's that's easy okay i'm just looking at our calendar and that one should close before 30 days for yeah, sure it should definitely be 30 days so i would like to see the evidence behind the scenes um of the deal i actually just saw one now so there's that but I'm gonna I'm doing the due diligence that our audience asks for. No, I love this. Right? This is so cool, and this is gonna be so <laughs> exciting. And and you, our follow up, you guys, will do a live stream. Let's do it and kind of walk through this entire process. And in that live stream, we'll be able to add the dates that I don't want to add into this episode. But in that live stream, we'll be able to add the dates and go through the process. But in the meantime, um, you guys definitely check out Toddy. Toddy, tell us how to find you. I'm super excited. I was I was trying to find the a address of this deal in Savannah so I could send it to you now okay. so we could track it. So I'm going to find it. it. Do I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I, when I um, close this episode out, um, you can be finding that. Um, but before that, tell us how to find you and um, how people can connect with you. Yeah, so um, I'm on all platforms at Toddy Virtual, T-A-D-I Virtual. Um, and you can follow me there. I'm still tracking my journey and I talk about everything that I'm doing all the time. So definitely give me a follow. I'll appreciate it. And yeah. thank you for having me on here. This has been really fun and I'm excited about this thing. I am excited <laughs> too. And because I think that by the time based on what we're saying here, by the time this episode drops, we will have proven your concept. Yes. Um, I would love for people at that time, we'll have an update by the time people see this. So what's a, uh, a, a, a full transparency special to the audience you got an affiliate affiliate link? Yeah, I, I, um, it's uh, virtualtransparency.com virtualtransparency.com I didn't even know we had that, but you came ready. <laughs> Virtual transparent. Mm. Now, Toddy, Reese, we're going to edit this part of the episode out if Tidy don't show me a deal. No, oh, I, I got you. No, 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 no. I'm, you're the first person that wanted to see the concept proved. And I really actually appreciate that because yeah. I think it's easy to get anywhere and just say some stuff. Yeah. But I love showing. Listen, let me let me... Let me this episode will not release until it does. Okay? I'm excited. No, 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 no. I'm this episode will not release until it does. We've got something to prove. I am excited for you. Um, tell me what that link is again. Virtual. Virtualtransparency.com. Virtualtransparency.com. You guys, if you saw this episode drop, the, the concept was proven. If wholesaling seems like a route uh, for you, then make sure you go to virtualtransparency.com and find Toddy and all of her mentorship and coaching opportunities to get you in the game. Um, if you've enjoyed this episode, do me a favor and drop in the comments here. Let's see, you know, it's time to take action. I want you to drop in the moment, the pivotal moment for you in this episode that said, you know what? I can do this. I can, I can do this wholesaling. For me, it was when Toddy really broke down how to leverage virtual assistants to make this a successful business model. What was it for you that said, hmm, Yep, this is it. I'm going to start wholesaling. I'm looking into it. I'm looking this toddy woman up and trying to find out how we can rub elbows and get closer. Let me know in the comments. And as usual, for those of you who are looking for business coaching and mentorship, you need to be a part of my mentorship community, Actionable CEO. That's www.actionableceo.com. It's just $97 a month. And I teach you principles to help you level up personally, professionally, and financially. As always, until next week, make sure that you are taking action and moving the needle forward in your business.